Raytheon's standard Missile 3's body is made from steel alloy that are often coated with chromium along the cavity of the body in order to protect against the excessive pressures and heat that are accompanied with a missile launch. Then the body of the missile is made from die casting, where it is made in two separate halves. Die casting involves pouring molten metal into a steel die of the desired shape and letting the metal harden. As it cools, the metal assumes the same shape as the die. At this time, an optional chromium coating can be applied to the interior surfaces of the halves that correspond to a completed missile's cavity. The halves are then welded together and nozzles are added at the tail end of the body after it has been welded. After, two sets of movable fins are now added to the predetermined points along the missile's body. The fins can be attached to mechanical joints that are then welded to the outside of the body or they can be inserted into holes purposely milled into the body. The propellant must be carefully applied to the missile cavity in order to ensure uniform coating, as any irregularities will result in an unreliable burning rate, which in turn detracts from the performance of the missile. The best means of achieving a uniform coating is to apply the propellant by using centrifugal force. This application, called casting, is done in an industrial centrifuge that is well shielded. Next, the two color IIR seeker or the infrared detection systems components are assembled in a series of operations that are separate from the rest of the missile's construction. Circuits that support the infrared system are then soldered onto pre-printed boards. Extra attention is given to optical materials at this time to protect them from excessive heat, as this can alter the missile's detectable wavelength. The assembled infrared subsystem is now set aside pending final assembly. The circuit boards for the electronics are also assembled independently from the rest of the missile. If called for by the design, microchips are added to the boards at this time. Next, the guidance system can now be integrated by linking the circuit boards and inserting the entire assembly into the missile body through an access panel. The missile's control surfaces are then linked with the infrared system by a series of relay wires, also entered into the missile body via access panels. During the final assembly phase of the SM-3, the infrared system is bolted into place at the tip of the missile. From there, the missile is ready to be shipped out and tested.